So we have looked in the earlier modules both the absorbing boundary condition for one and two dimensions and we also introduced one of the most important absorbing boundary condition which is the perfectly matched layer and we said that a perfectly matched layer is a very important technique that you not only use in the finite difference algorithm but also in other algorithms. Later on when we discuss other advanced methods and alternative methods for example finite volume method we will discuss more about the perfectly matched layer itself for now we are going to look into some examples for modeling practical electromagnetic problem using both the absorbing boundary condition and using perfectly matched layer. So let us now look into the first problem that we are interested in is basically simulating a horn antenna. So for example you can have an horn antenna with certain radiation pattern and when you want to simulate it in a two dimensional space you have a physical space which is infinite and obviously we cannot simulate them for an infinite space we have to have a finite simulation space and when we talk about a finite simulation space the question is what kind of a boundary condition we are going to use. So in this case we can have a choice of using an absorbing boundary condition or using a perfectly matched layer as I said before the idea of using a perfectly matched layer is to bring the boundary closer to the object of our interest itself. So with that in mind as you can see in this example what we have done is we have brought the perfectly matched layer closer to the domain of our interest. For example in this slide you see in the previous example what we had is if you are using only an absorbing boundary condition we will place the absorbing boundary condition at the point where we have the PEC whereas when we are using a PML we are bringing the PML inside and closer to the object of interest and that was the motivation for using the PML we can bring the boundary closer and closer in fact the boundary what this simulated space is going to look is this particular boundary here and obviously what we are going to do is we have to truncate also the PML what we are doing is we are truncating is using a PEC boundary condition and we looked at PEC boundary condition also before when we dealt with special interface conditions. So the motivation for using a PML is to bring the boundary from a far away distance to closer and closer distance in order to make the simulation domain smaller and also the accuracy better. So we can also see a similar example when we are modeling a particular problem for a waveguide truncation. So in this case when you are interested in truncating a waveguide so assume that we are interested in a infinitely long in x direction and infinitely long in y direction and with a finite dimension in y and we are simulating this particular waveguide and obviously we cannot use the very large physical space we have to truncate this and this waveguide is going to be excited by a mode so this is the source direction and when the source is in particular direction we have to truncate this waveguide using a boundary condition. So what we are going to do is we are going to reduce the infinite space into a finite simulation space and the question is what we are going to put in the end of this simulation space. One choice is to use a simple boundary condition from Enquist Machta or Silver Miller boundary condition that will be the case of a ABC and as I said before in the case of a PML we are interested in bringing the boundary closer and closer to the actual domain itself so that is what you will see the end point of the ABC will be the domain truncation itself and we will put the PML closer to the domain of interest itself so we are going to come closer to the domain so the actual interface is going to be closer to the simulation object of our interest. So if you are interested in what is going to happen at this point we are coming closer this might be easier to explain uh, using the example on the paper. So what I am doing is I have a infinitely long waveguide and let us say I am measuring what is happening at this point and the source is coming from this angle. So if I have to put an ABC I am putting the ABC at this point. So let us say this has certain distance for example 10 lambda. So what I can do is with the PML I can come closer 
to this particular point let us say a thickness and this distance is 9 lambda. So, I am able to reduce the computation domain a little bit and even for most of the practical problems you can come even closer in the order of 4 to 5 lambda. In some cases this lambda value will change, but the idea here is the computational cost that you are going to incur because of a PML should be justified by the reduction in the computational space itself. So, that is what we are seeing here in this waveguide problem our PML is going to reduce the actual simulation space to a certain limit. So, another problem that we can look into is the problem of simulating a space with a Gaussian wave. So, for example, I am interested in a physical space and I am simulating the space with a Gaussian wave and instead of simulating this in an infinite space I can simulate it using a finite space and I can reduce the space in such a manner that I can truncate it using certain boundary condition. One way of doing it is to put A B C and we will see this also in our example we will truncate it using the radiation boundary condition and we will see how this radiation boundary condition is implemented in MATLAB and like in the case before we can also put perfectly matched layer and that is what you see here instead of A B C you can come and truncate the domain even closer than the A B C condition itself. So, that will be a PML condition. So, what we are going to show in a simulation is both the case of truncating using a absorbing boundary condition radiating absorbing boundary condition and using a perfectly matched layer the one which we described in the previous module. So, let us start looking at to the MATLAB program here. So, what we are doing here is we are initializing certain simulation parameter for example, the speed of propagation, the frequency of excitation, relative permittivity and permeability so on and so forth and we are setting the simulation time here and we are also setting the current limit for simulating this problem. We have set it into 0.5 because we are in explicit method here and we have set the value of delta t based on the current condition and the delta x that we have computed or which we have assigned and we are going to set also the grid parameters in x direction and y direction and the position of the source itself and we are initializing the field values. Remember that we have to give both the initial and the boundary condition. So, this is the initial condition for the E z, H x and H y field and we are setting the equation into a loop for us to compute the value of H x, H y and E z. So, these are the three values that we are computing based on the Maxwell equation and we are setting the absorbing boundary condition which is here a one wave wave equation similar to the Engels Machta condition that we saw before and it is going to assign the value of E z like the way we computed before and we are going to see what is going to be the value of the field by plotting it here. So, we are plotting here the E z wave. So, let us run this program. So, what you are seeing is a Gaussian wave excited exactly at the center and this domain is the square domain like the way we saw before. What you will see is as the wave is coming towards the boundary it is going to just go without any reflection theoretically, but there are going to be some reflection and this reflection is going to depend on the angle at which particular boundary is going to see the incoming wave. So, what you see is a classical example for the one wave equation and the value of the E z field at the boundary is also going to change with respect to time and we see that the wave is going without any problem and the simulation runs without any instability issue. So, this is a classical example for an absorbing boundary condition. I will give you these codes for you to try for yourself and simulate the problem for various delta x and delta y values and also for various time stepping. So, that you can see the accuracy of the one wave wave equation or the absorbing boundary condition. So, what we will do next is we will simulate the same problem using a PML condition and we will see instead of the wave propagating as if the domain is infinite, 
the wave will start to decay inside the medium and that is important for you to know because the wave is going to see the losses inside the medium as we have explained it in the previous module. So let us now simulate the example for the perfectly matched layer let us start running this program. So we are defining the grid like the way we did before we have the lambda value which is the frequency value we have to know this for us to set the thickness of the perfectly matched layer and we have set the time and uh, delta t and so on and so forth like the way we did before we have set the x and y directions the source is going to be in the same place the PML parameters are defined here so we are going to increase the thickness of the PML in 5 steps we can also increase it in a parabolic way so on and so forth here we have done it in 5 steps and we have set the values of various fields initially to 0 and we are computing the values of the PML fluxes that we need for one side PML in x direction the second side PML in the x direction so on and so forth and we have done that for also in the y direction and we are substituting the value accordingly into the field and we are updating the ez hx and hy field. So now we are also simulating the problem like the way we did for the ez field and we are going to plot it and see how the ez field is getting absorbed. So let us simulate this problem in this case the wave should decay where at the edge the conductivity or the losses are going to be maximum so the wave should not be seen at the end of the boundary itself as we expect the wave is coming inside it is not reflecting out and we see that it is also getting absorbed as it should be and we do not see any waves almost at the boundaries which is a good sign for the perfectly matched layers and we also see that the wave is not seeing any reflections and there is no instability as it should be. So I encourage you to also simulate this code and test for yourself how the PML is working and also see what are the parameters which we can change and adapt and how this PML will behave for various parameters. In this case we did the step by step increase of the losses you can also increase it as a parabolic as we discussed in the previous module. With that being said uh, we have seen various applications for using the absorbing boundary condition and also perfectly matched layer. I encourage you and also request you to really look into these uh, types of boundary conditions because we will be using them for various applications not only in the finite difference problem but also for finite element, finite volume and algebraic topology. So for you to be fully comfortable with modeling problems for electromagnetic application absorbing boundary conditions are key tools for you to master so I encourage you to test it and try it for yourself. <laughs>